All right, uh, we're going to review SQL today, and then we're going to learn some new stuff with it. Um, we went over the basic uh, SQL statement for queries, which is the select statement. And what I'm going to do is we're going to work with a couple of new tables today. And we're going to first review the stuff that we went over last time, and then we're going to go and add some stuff to it. At some point today, we're likely to get into multi-table uh, joins. I just, um, just for the heck of it, I went and, and made a new database just so that we're not using the same data over and over again. Keep it fresh, put some numeric values in there so we can get some sums and, and totals and all that. So here's the a, here's a database that I created. And I just put a handful of rows in it, in each table. I have a department table with a department ID and a department name. And then I have an employee table that has the first name, last name, city, state, salary, and department ID. So let me write these fields on the doc cam in case you can't see them. We're going to start out by looking just at the employee table. F name, L name, city, state, salary, and department ID. All right, let's, let's have some practice here. If I wanted to see the first name and last name of every employee in Ohio, sorted first by city, then by last name, then by first name, what would the SQL statement look like? Take a minute, write it down. I want to see first name and last name, Ohio employees only, and I want to see it sorted by city, and then by last name, and then by first name. So I guess I want to see first name, last name, city. If we're going to sort it by it, we better show it, otherwise it won't make sense, right? So first name, last name, city for only Ohio employees, and we want to see it sorted first by city, then by um, last name, then by first name. So take a minute, think about it. Okay. First name, last name, and city, yeah. And then we want uh, only Ohio employees. And then we want it sorted by city, so whatever the lowest alphabetical city is, then last name, and then first name. Let's take a minute to think about it, and then we'll talk about it and we'll look at the answer. All right, someone want to start me out? Okay. All right. Actually, we don't need the parentheses, but we can put... Yeah, we, we actually don't need to do anything with these. Um, sometimes you enclose your column names in brackets, in the square brackets. And you can do that anytime, but you need to do that if your uh, column name includes a space. So I'm usually careful about not including any, so you, you don't have to. So select F name, L name, and then city. Okay, someone want to add the next part? Or do you want to finish it out? From. Okay. Employee From employee, okay. Where city Okay. Yeah, where city, oh, not where city, where state equals Ohio, 
and it happens in this database, I'm abbreviating, so it would be OH. It would be in quotes because that's a value, that's not the name of a column. And then to finish up here. Um, order by. Mm -hmm. Actually, city, last name, and then first name. Yeah. And we don't need to say ascending or descending because if we don't specify that, we assume that we want ascending order. Uh, which would be from lowest to highest, so it would be what you would in general conversation call alphabetical order. All right, cool. Let's do, oh, go ahead. I noticed you abbreviated Ohio. Yeah. My question is if the table, if the data in this table is not abbreviated, uh -huh. are we able to abbreviate? Or no. No, you would, have, you, would, you would have to write what you needed to match. In other words, I know because I went in, you know, two minutes before class <laughs> and entered in the employees, and I know that I abbreviated the state, all right? So uh, that's why I abbreviated it. If, if, if they were spelling out the full state, then it would be Ohio, all right? That's where you get in the difficulty, though, of, uh, and, and why a lot of times you'll create uh, a, a, another table and a foreign key relationship to have that consistency. Then, because I could do one is Ohio and one is OH, all right? And then I'd have the potential for problem. Here we're going to behave ourselves, and we know that it's OH, and we'll, we'll stick to doing that. We won't needlessly complicate it that for a while. Yes? In that same sense, does uh, capitalization and stuff? Good question. Uh, actually, it is not case sensitive. So if I say OH with an uppercase O and a lowercase h, and it's actually stored as uppercase O, uppercase H, it doesn't matter. It will match it. Um, that's the default. I believe some databases you can configure to uh, worry about case, but typically that's not done. Typically, it's not case sensitive in the database. That actually kind of makes it nice. It also makes it nice um, that the column names aren't case sensitive. So, you know, I could say select employee ID and it really doesn't matter how it is stored in the table, you know, and, and so that, that, that's a nice, nice thing. Other questions? Let's talk a little bit more about the where clause, okay? Because uh, if I remember what we left off last time, we just did simple where clauses like this. Okay? Let's expand those where clauses a little bit. All right? These where clauses can get uh, more complicated. For example, we might want someone that is either in Ohio or Michigan or Pennsylvania, let's say. In which case, we have a couple of options. One option will be to do this. Select, let's say we, we have the same query, but we don't want just Ohio people. We want Ohio, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. I could say select F name, L name, city, from employee, where, state, equals OH or state equals MI or state equals PA order by city L name F name. So one thing you can do is you can Connect conditions together with either ands or ors. All right? When you connect the conditions together with ors, then one of them, if one of them is true, then the whole condition is considered to be true and the row will be selected. So in other words, this says, give me the first name, last name, city, from the employee table, where one of those three things is true. Where the state is Ohio, or the state is Michigan, or the state is Pennsylvania. So if I ran this query, I'd get all the Ohio people, all the Michigan people, and all the Pennsylvania people. All right? 
That's with an or. With an or, only one of the conditions needs to be true for the row to be selected. All right? The other way that you can connect con uh, conditions is with an and. And with an and, all the conditions need to be true. So for example, if I were to say this, select F name, L name, city from employee where state equals Ohio and city equals Cleveland, it would not pick up any other Clevelands in other states. I think there are Clevelands in other states. I think there are. Let's pretend there are. Okay. Uh, so if there's a Cleveland, Mississippi, or Cleveland, Georgia, or Cleveland, Wyoming, it won't pick it up if I have an and. Because for, with, with the case of an and, both conditions need to be true in order for it to be selected. All right. Um, if I added a third condition and connected it with an and, then all three conditions would need to be true. So with ors and ands, if you only have all ors or only have ands, it's pretty easy. With the ors, is if one of the conditions is true, the row gets selected. With the ands, all the conditions need to be true. Things get confusing when you're mixing ands and ors because then there's the, the order of operation gets in get, gets hairy. It's like in math. If I were to say, you know, what's the answer to this? Seven plus three times two, right? It depends what order you do the math in, right? If you take seven plus three and get ten and multiply it by two, you'll get twenty. If you take three times two and get six and then add seven to it, you get thirteen. Well, which one's right? Well, in programming, typically, and in most math notations, the multiplication takes precedence over the, the addition. And if there happens to be more than one multiplication, you go from left to right. So in this case, this is wrong, this is correct. You first do the multiplication, then you do the addition. Now, with and or ors, how does it work? Well, the and takes precedence over the ors. So if I were to say if x equals 1 or x equals 2 and y equals 3, these two conditions would first be anded together. All right? And people actually use the word anded. All right? And the result of that would be, term, would be determined. How would that be determined? That part of the condition would be true if both parts are true. So if x was equal to 2 and y was equal to 3, then that part of the condition would be true. Or x equals 1. So either both of these are true or this one is true. And the condition is met. All right? If you're ever in doubt, you can put parentheses around the conditions and force those to happen first. All right? So sometimes, again, it gets very, very, very confusing when you mix ands and ors, and therefore, um, you know, you want to, um, you know, you want to put parentheses around it just to make it clear which one you're doing first. Now, there's a little shortcut that we can, we can use. That, that can clean up your, your code a little bit. Let's look at this one. I said select from employee where, and then I enumerated three different states, where state is Ohio, or state is Michigan, or state is Pennsylvania. As you can imagine, if we got to say a list of 10 states, that would get to be tedious. Or state equals Indiana, or state equals uh, Kentucky, or state equals Tennessee, or whatever. All right. So there's sort of a shortcut when you want to see if one column is one of a set of values. 
And that's the in clause. So, this statement is equivalent to this. Select F name, L name, city, from employee, where state in, and then in parentheses you have the list of states, Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania. And although I won't write out the order by clause, but that would be the same. If you look, that's a little more concise than doing it this way. And it would become especially more noticeable if you had more and more states. If we had 15 states in that list, then this way would get to be very uh, long and hard to read. And this way would be a lot more concise, a lot more straightforward to read. All right? You can also do a between, all right, with SQL. One of the columns we have in the uh, employee table is a salary. Let's say we wanted to see all the salaries between a certain value. Let's say between 20,000 and 30,000. All right. I could write it like this. Let's say I want to see a list of all the columns in, the, in the, the employee table for those employees who have a salary between 10,000 and 20,000. I could say select star from employees or from employee, where salary is greater than or equal to 10,000 and salary less than or equal to 20,000. All right? So there's a case of a, a compound condition. I, I wanted if both pieces of that were true. So that would give me all the employees that the salary is between 10,000 and 20,000, inclusive. So if it was exactly 10,000 or exactly 20,000, it would include it. Uh, again, notice I'm using a different, what's called a logical operator, uh, or relational operator, rather. I'm using greater than or equal to. And again, you could do that with the alpha, uh, alphabetical characters as well, with the thought that the, the later in the alphabet you are, the higher it's considered to be. So you could ask, is this name greater than that name, all right, if you wanted to. Usually not much of a need to do that, but again, what, what the greater than and less than uh, operators are typically used for uh, are numbers. Now, an alternative to that would be this. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, that's fine. That would literally just give you the salaries and it wouldn't give you like the people's names along with it. Yeah. Uh, I just put a star just because I'm starting to get lazy for writing out all the columns. All right. And just in the interest of time, I'm just saying select star. In other words, give me all the columns. Yes. Yeah. Star says give me all the columns. Correct. Another way I could do this, by the way, is I could say select star from employee where salary between 10,000 and 20,000. So that's something that's useful too. Um, this is nice if you're doing date comparisons, for example. If you're comparing and you want to see something that happened in the month of January, you could say where the date between January 1, 
2011, January 31, 2011. Yes? Is between? Yeah, I believe it is. If it's, it either, <laughs> it either is or it isn't. Uh, I believe it is. All right, I believe it is. Which means that if you don't want it to be inclusive, why well, you probably couldn't use between. You'd have to uh, specify the two explicitly. I have to confess that I'm only 75% sure that it's inclusive. So try it if you want to. Yeah, I know. If I was on Jeopardy, I would hope this wouldn't be the Daily Double or something, you know. Photo yeah, photo Fred. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what's no odds number? Uh, all right. Um, there's one more operator. Uh, oh, uh, logical or uh, um, relational operators. We've seen equal, not equal. That's greater than or less than. It's the same as saying not equal. Greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, less than, greater than. Um, there is a not that like negates it. You know that you can you can do. Then there's another interesting one that's the like operator. What do you suppose the like operator is? What do you suppose the like operator does in comparisons? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a wild card. In other words, let's say if I was looking up an employee by name, all right, and maybe I don't remember the exact name of the employee, all right. Maybe their name is Zellers, or maybe their name is Zellman, or maybe their name is um, Zellars. You know, a lot of people misspell and put an A on the end of my name. A lot of people forget the S on the end of my name. All right. So maybe you're not exactly sure how to spell the name, but you know it's Z E L L something. All right. You can do a query using the like operator to pick things in the table that partially match a string. And it goes like this. In that example, if I wanted a list of people whose last name started with Z-E-L-L, -L, I would say select star from employee where last name like Z E L L, and in, a in access you use an asterisk. That's one thing that bugs me a little bit about access is that's actually not standard. In standard SQL, you use a percentage sign. So that's standard SQL. And in fact, if you write a, an ASP.NET program that accesses a database and you want to do a, a, a like, you would use the, the percent sign as well. But if we're in access, the idea of access is it's meant to be very user friendly for the novice, people who don't necessarily have a lot of computer experience. So the thought is, I think, that asterisk are used in other cases for a wild card, so we'll use it here as well. All right? Yes? Can you use No. No. I, I, uh, unless, unless there's like a change in the most recent version or something, a, a percent won't work. Would the star work elsewhere? Yeah, the star would work elsewhere. And let's go and, and let's go and look at this. All right. So we have in this uh, table a Smith, a Doe, a Johnson, and a Jones. All right. Let's find everyone whose last name starts with J. Okay. That should return Mary Johnson and Sue Jones. So I'll go here, create a query, and I'll go into SQL view, and I'll say select star from employee where L name equals, or I'm sorry, like 
J asterisk. Notice I did a lowercase j. Let me post this into Notepad so we can all get a closer look. Select star from employee where L name like J asterisk. That will find everything that starts with a J. So if I run this, I get, as predicted, Mary Johnson and Sue Jones. If I go, let me ver just verify what I said for myself. If I go and replace that with a percentage sign, no go. It actually looks for someone named J percent sign which would kind of be a cool last name, all right? Which would probably drive databases crazy. That's, oh, I have a, I have a new project. I'm gonna change my last name to Z-E-L-L -L percent sign and see if anyone in the world can look me up by last name. All right, are there any questions? We'll see you in like, no, I'm just kidding. All right, so yeah, in Access you do have to use a percentage sign. Now the question was, was asked, can I use that elsewhere? Can I use the asterisk elsewhere? And you absolutely can. For example, and for names it's probably less, uh, less important, but think of, for example, title of, of a book or a title of a movie. You know, um, you know um, is the book called Catcher in the Rye or A Catcher in the Rye? Or the catcher in the rye. I don't remember. I think it's a catcher in the rye, but it could just be catcher in the rye. All right. I could do a search for catcher, and then put that enclosed with an asterisk before and after catcher, and say something like title, like catcher and it would find catcher anywhere in the title. So if it started with catcher, if it ended with catcher, or if catcher was just a word in the middle. All right? Or not even the word catcher, if the letters C-A-T-C-H-E-R were, were part of another word. All right? Uh, catcher ring, I don't know, catcher's glove. It would, it would appear uh, uh, as well. So yes, you can, put, you can put the wild card anywhere. Um, in our database, just for laughs, we could look for everyone whose name contains a letter O. Not terribly meaningful, but good enough to demonstrate the, the syntax. So I could say select star from employee where L name like uh, quotation mark asterisk O asterisk. And so it will pick up not just Mary, Sue, and John, but it picks up, or it doesn't pick up just Mary and Sue, but it picks up John Doe as well, all right, because the O is somewhere in their name. If I wanted to pick something at the end of it, I could do star and then string. Like, and this would pick up Johnson or Williamson or anything that ended in an S-O-N. So I picked up Johnson. I want to go back to this query for a second. And I want to see if you notice something. All right. I'm going back to this query. Select star from employee where L name is like star O star. Okay. I run that. Notice the order it gave it to me. It gave me employee number three, employee number four, then employee number two. Gee, that's weird. Let's go in and let's remove the where clause altogether. Let's just say select star from employee. No where clause. No where clause means who's it going to give me? It's going to give me everyone. It gave me one, two, three, and then four. All right? Do you find that odd? Yeah, I find that a little odd, but it's explainable. It's explainable based on what I said when I introduced the WHERE clause. This is just a, a demonstration of, of what I had talked about with the WHERE clause. When you do a SELECT statement, the database engine will return it 
in whatever order it feels like, <laughs> essentially. There probably is some sort of internal logic, all right? I'm sure there's logic that goes and does that and figures out how to do it or whatever, all right? But essentially, you can't make any absolute uh, definite statements about the order uh, unless you put an order by clause. If, so if you really want it sorted in a certain order, don't assume, gee, well, this will be sorted in, in primary key order, because we saw in the second case it wasn't. It was sorted in who knows what order. So therefore, always put a, a, an order by clause if you want it to be sorted in a certain order. Again, the database engine decides how to do that. By database engine, I mean in this case Access, in another case it could be SQL Server or uh, Oracle or whatever. Um, so without the order by clause, you know, all bets are off as far as the order goes. You might be able to observe some sort of pattern, but ultimately you don't know. It's going to return it essentially in the order it feels like it. All right. I think we've done everything we can do with just one table except for one thing. And we're going to do that now. Now, um, we really need to do up this classroom more like a, a TV set and like have like, you know, have like signs blinking if something important is going on. It may be like important over my head flashing or something like this. This one's important. This, this next concept that we're going to talk about is one of the concepts that tends to give students trouble. All right? And um, so we're going to spend a little bit of time on it, and we'll go over a few examples of it. Let me introduce you to the concept first, and then we'll talk about, um, you know, then we'll go over a few examples. Now, one of the things that we said about transforming data raw data and in information involved summarizing data, right? We may not care to see every individual row in a table, all right? If they wanted to analyze where students from LC came from, you know, um, you wouldn't need a list of every single student. You'd want to see some sort of totals grouped by something. Group by city, you know, maybe group by region of the county, you know, whatever. All right. So one of the ways that you can you can take that gigantic pile of data and sort of put it in a manageable form is to not show everything, but just show totals. All right. Now, in the select statement, totals along with averages and counts and other things are example of what are called aggregate functions. All right? When we talk about an aggregate or we talk about aggregation, what does aggregate mean when we just use it in, 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 in normal conversation? When we say aggregate or, or we have this aggregation of stuff. It's a group. All right? So, the SQL statements that we've been looking at so far work on one row at a time, right? Every one, every SQL statement that we wrote returns one row, all right? Or, no, I'm sorry, it doesn't return just one row. It returns uh, one, it returns a row at a time. So, for example, when we had this select statement up there, it returns the row for every employee whose name matches that pattern. All right. Sometimes, though, again, we're not interested in um, every single row. We just want some sort of totals. All right. So, let's say if we didn't want to see every single employee, but we wanted to see the total number of employees. All right. There's a difference there. Instead of seeing, you know, select star will show me every employee. If I don't want every employee, but I want the number of employees, then I can use an aggregate function to say, give me the group of all employees and give me the count of the number of rows in that group. So, let's go 
for an example. And let, let's make sure we understand the difference between these two statements. This is a statement that we, whoops, that we used last time. Select star from employee. What will that give me? That will give me a list of every single employee. If we simply wanted to see the, the count of how many employees do we have, that statement would be this. Select count star from employee. That's not going to return a list of employees. That's going to return one number. Boom. 583 or however many employees we have. All right. So the count is an aggregate function. Instead of displaying each row, row, it's a function that gets performed on that set of rows that gets returned. You know, if we didn't have that aggregate function, we'd get a list of all the rows. Here we're saying, okay, don't give me the list. Instead, count them up. Tell me how many there are. And that's an aggregate function. So let's go and let's run a couple, let's run those two statements in our database to see the difference. All right. First I have select star from employee and when I run that I get a list of every employee. If I go and change that to say select count star from employee, I just get the one number. Tells me that there are four employees. That cursor's kind of in the way, but it's telling me I have four employees. So you see the difference between the two. The count, when I use an aggregate function, it doesn't show me every row. It does some kind of function on the set of rows, on the group of rows, on the aggregation of rows that I have returned. So we can count. That's one thing that we can do. The other thing we can do is we can average. All right. For example, we have in our employee table a salary that runs from 30,000 through 60,000. We could write a statement to average. And what do I want to average? The salary from employee. And what that will do is it'll give us the average salary is $45,000. All right. We can sum the salaries. We can total them up. Like let's say, well, what's our total expense for our employees? What's our total cost of employees? I can say select sum. SUM salary. And that'll show me the sum of all the salaries is 180,000, I think, if those zeros aren't blending together. <laughs> yeah, 180,000. All right. I can do this on. I can do two of these aggregate functions, right? I could say select count star average salary and the sum of the salary. So I can do those. I can treat those just like they're, they're columns and do, do the same way, separate them by commas. So I can run that and it will say there's four employees, the average salary is 45,000, the total salary is 180,000. Now, you may notice that these are labeled kind of goofy, all right? Because they're not really columns in the database. They're they're a calculation that's performed. Um 
And I, I remember, and with a little bit of logic, I can figure, well, four is probably the count of the number of employees, 45,000 is probably the average, 180,000 is probably the total. But if I wanted to label these, I can use what's called an alias. Let me go and I'll write this out and then I will show you a notepad. All right. Now notice that the query returns something at that. Looks more meaningful, right? Instead of those goofy expression zero, expression one. And all I did was I did this. After the aggregate function, and you can actually do this to any column, but it's especially important with aggregate functions. I can say as, and then I can specify an alias. Now, I put those in the square brackets because they include spaces. If it didn't include spaces, I would not need to put them in square brackets. For example, if this was simply average with no um, with no average space salary, then I wouldn't really need the square brackets around it. Same rule applies with just ordinary column names too, by the way. Yes? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right, because I'm doing a count of the number of employees. Think of star as meaning, you know, the entire row. So if I say select star, I'm saying select the entire row. If I'm saying select count, I'm saying give me a count. A count of what? How many rows there are. Give me the count of the entire row. All right. There's a couple other uh, aggregate functions. There's a minimum and a maximum, a min and a max. So I could find out who the, the highest salary and the lowest salary. All right. And I'm good to go. Now, this is all well and good. This doesn't sound that hard. Well, here's where things start getting a little harder. Because we may not want totals for everybody. We might want those totals broken down by something. All right. For example, in the employee table, we have a state and we have a department. And conceivably, we might want to break down any of those aggregate functions by department or by state. Or maybe even by state and department. All right? Let's say, for example, we wanted to find the average salary um, for each department. All right. So we know how to do the average salary period. All right. If I want the average salary, I can do this. Select average salary as average from employee. And that tells me the average salary is 45000 for everyone. For every row that we selected, that's the average salary. But again, we might want to break down those totals a little bit. We might want to break down by department, let's say. All right? So what we might want to see is we might want to see something that looks like this.
we might want to see department one, the average salary is 42,000. Department two, the average salary is 50,000. Department three, the average salary is 60,000 or something like that. Where we see the department number or the department ID uh, and then next to it we see the average just for that department. All right. That's why that's where we have to add in another clause. All right. I'm going to leave a little bit of a space in the select statement to fill in something. All right. Select. I'm going to leave a space. Average salary from employee. That will give me just one average. All right. If I want to break it down by department, I can say select department ID, average salary from employee. Then I have to add on another clause, and that is the group by clause. The group by clause, think of it this way. That's how we want to break down our totals. All right. In the first example where we get one number, 45,000 is the average, we're not breaking down the totals at all. So we have no group by clause. All right. We just say select average salary from employees. Here, though, in the second example, we want to get something that looks like this where we show the department ID and then the average salary for that department. The next department ID, the average salary for that department, and so on down the line. So we want to break down our totals, we want to break down our averages by department. And when you want to break it down by something, it needs to be included in the group by. Now, here's a rule. And next time I may attempt to explain this rule. All right, but for now, just sort of memorize the rule. All right, when you're using a group by clause, everything on the select line either has to be an aggregate function or on the group by clause. In this case, the department ID is on the group by clause. The aggregate function, or the average is an aggregate function. So I'm okay. This is an okay statement. All right. Actually, let me rephrase that. Whenever you use an aggregate function, everything needs to, either needs to be an aggregate function or needs to be included in a group by clause. So. We can just look at these statements and apply that rule even if we don't understand the whys of that rule. Select, count, star, from, employee. Is that valid? Yeah, that's valid because everything in the select is an aggregate function. So we're using an aggregate function and Everything that we're selecting is an aggregate function, so we're okay. Select. Oh, come on, pen, don't fail me now. Select department ID average salary from employee. Group by department ID. Is that valid? Yes, because we're using an aggregate function, so everything on the select must either be an aggregate function, which this one is, or it needs to be included in the group by clause, which this one is. So that's legit. We'll be an example of something that is illegal. One second. Select department ID, 
average salary from employee group by city. All right? That's not legal because we're using an aggregate function. All right? This is an aggregate function, so that's okay. This is not an aggregate function, and it's also not on the group by clause, so eh, this will give us an error. You had your hand up a second ago? Yeah. Valid as compared to what? Valid as compared to uh, SQL will blow up if you try to run it. Okay, so valid as compared to the state that's going to work or not. Yeah, it, it will SQL give you an error. And let's real quick show you an example of a group by that works and a group by that doesn't work. So I'll go in and I'll say select department ID average salary as average from employee group by department ID. All right? This is, this is a legal statement. It's a valid statement because we're using an aggregate function. So everything on the select must either be an aggregate function. All right, that's an aggregate function. Or it must be included in the group by. And department ID is included in the group by. So we go in here and we paste this query in. And there you see we get department one, the average salary is 35,000. Department two, the average salary is 50,000. Department three, the average salary is 60,000. Now, let's go in and break it. All right? If I say group by city, all right, now this isn't valid, right, according to my rule, because we're using an aggregate function, so everything has to be an aggregate function or on the group by clause. Well, Average salary is okay because it's an aggregate function. Department ID, though, ooh, it's not on the group by clause. So let's go and run it. And this is what I mean by not valid. Boom. You tried to execute a query that does not include specified expression. Department ID is part of an aggregate function. All right. A little bit of a misleading error message because we don't intend for that to be part of an aggregate function. We intend for it to be on the group by clause, or that's where it should be. So to correct that, we would say group by. Now the other thing that would be a problem is if we omitted the group by clause altogether. Again, for the same sort of reasoning. Department ID is not an aggregate function, and it's not on a group by clause, and yet we're using an aggregate function, and so as such... It's going to blow, and it does. All right? So now we've done most everything. You know, every time I keep saying we've done everything or almost everything, I, popping in my head are a couple of other kind of oddball situations and all that. But, and there always will be that. Again, that, that's, that's the great part of SQL, that, that it, it really is a few elements that get put together in so many different ways that, that is, there's, you know, endless possibilities with it. Next time what we'll do is we'll spend a little bit of time reviewing this concept, the concepts we covered over the last couple of, of classes, and then we'll get into multi-tabled queries. Because wouldn't it be nice if on this query... Instead of showing the department number, it showed the department name. Well, the department name's in another table, all right? Well, let's figure out how to do that. We saw how to do that in query by example. We need to be able to do that um, on the, uh, on the uh, um, writing our own SQL as well. All right, questions? Yes? What it would do, if, if I did that, if I said group by department ID and city, that would be legit. But I probably would want to also select the city. So I'd probably do something like this. 
I'd probably say select department ID, city, average salary from employee, group by department ID, and city. And what the output would look like would be this. We'd have department one, city one, let's say it's Cleveland, average salary, 25000 Department ID two, city Elyria, oh, I'm sorry, no, 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 no. Department ID one still, city Elyria, average salary, 37000 Department one, City 3, Lorraine, salary 26000 Then Department 2, Cleveland. And it showed the average and all that down. Because again, we said we want to break it down by department and city. So it will break it down by the combination of department and city. Now, you want this to match this. Because, well, if you don't have it on the group by clause, it's going to give you an error. Right? We've already seen that. If we include it in the group by, we want to include it here as well. Otherwise, it'll give us this. The average for department one, city one is 25,000, but it's not telling you the name of the city. All right? Department one, city two is 37,000. So if you include it in the group by, you probably also want to include it up there, just so you can see the label next to it, and, and the, the query will make sense. All right? Okay, um, we'll pick up on this next time.